guys, it's your boy, Barca boy, 103. Today, today we're going to be doing the match preview for Paris Saint-Germain versus Barcelona in the first leg of the quarterfinals in the Champions League. This is it. The moment we've been waiting for for about a month or so now that will not only define our season, but also uh, future of players, future of managers, the confidence and, you know, morale of the fan base as well going for this you know la liga push a little bit this game is absolutely huge we are in the biggest moment the biggest game of our season and we'll wait and see if now barcelona can put in a result and somewhat compete to push for an opportunity in the final four of the champions league now before we get into it of course make sure you guys smash that like button down below let's try to get the 200 likes in this video be very much appreciated also if you're new make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it kickoff time for this match will be taking place at 9 p.m local times your regular kickoff time in the champions league and finally now the time has changed in europe so all now on an even playing field and this match will be taking place at the parc des princes in Paris, which of course is the home of Paris Saint-Germain, and the atmosphere is, uh, for this game is going to be absolutely wild. The PSG Ultras have sent out a message saying that tomorrow night we want to make the opponents tremble as soon as they enter the pitch. This despicable Barcelona, so often favored by the referees, must feel the hostile territory. It is our duty to make our stadium a terrifying fortress for them, and with the determination of our team, that's unbreakable. So they're planning a hostile, strong, loud, and even you could say dangerous atmosphere. We've seen, you know, PSG in the lead up to big games over the past few seasons in the Champions League as well. The flares are going to be out, the, uh, the, the uh, you know, confetti, the fireworks, everything's going to be all over the place. So we got to be prepared for that. And on the topic of referees, you got to be prepared for referees as well because bloody hell have we been absolutely finessed. The referee for this match is anthony bloody taylor who is by far one of the most one of the worst referees i've seen especially in big games as well in the premier league on the vrs is uh englishman stewart outwell it's gonna be not only rebounding against you know psg as a, as a side as a team but also their fans and this bloody ref as well let's now take a look at our opponents in paris saint germain of course psg are a very historic side the biggest team in france but on the european scale They've never done it, and I don't think they will anytime soon. But of course, the last time we faced them was in the Champions League. It was the semi, uh, I think it was the um, round 16, sorry, actually. And it was in the Parc des Princes. We did Drew 1 1. Of course, they beat us, I think, 4 1 in the first leg. So we're trying to make a miraculous comeback. We had some great chances in this game early on. Dembele missed about three uh, chances. Messi, I think, missed a penalty, missed a chance. Scored an absolute goal. Lasso, Messi did. I think Mbappe scored from the penalty spot. I think Icardi won the penalty off Clement Longley. So, very, very even game under Komen as well. So, I mean, we are a better side now than we were then. So, hopefully, we can get maybe the same result. If not, uh, even better now to the PSG this season they have been you know doing fairly well they're of course top in league uh, by 13 points they're pretty much gonna be winning league uh, as we expected in the Champions League I think they beat Real Sociedad in the last round uh, comfortably they were in the group of death of course with Dortmund uh, AC Milan and Newcastle I think they only finished second in that group because Dortmund finished first uh, if I'm not mistaken so again they barely got out of the group of death but they did get out of course nonetheless they take a look at the last five matches in all competition. In the last match, they do run one with Clermont. They beat Rene 1-0. They beat Marseille in the classic Classico, so to speak, in France 2-0. They beat Montpellier 6-2. And they also beat Nice in the French Cup quarterfinal 3-1. Let's take a look now at their last three games in all competition. Keep in mind when they're playing as well. They played on Saturday. They played on Wednesday. And they also played on Sunday where Barcelona had 10 days of full rest. Now, firstly... Is the I think Der Classic is not no, that's Der Classic is the Bundesliga, the Classic we'll call it I think uh, is what it's called. They beat them two 0 I watched this game. I tell you what, PSG weren't that great, but they of course hit on the strong of the counter, counter attack. Of course, the Marseille atmosphere was very very intense. You look at their starting lineup as well, where you see some rotation uh, here and there from PSG. But Donnarumma, I'll tell you what, an absolutely cracking 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 game but i think psg were clinical with their chances marseille of course were dangerous i think they scored twice and they were offside or they had created one chance scored one i think it was a bad man who scored as well but it was, i think it was ruled out for offside in the end so they got the red card very early on as well for um so i would say that they competed the game was tough 
and they came unscathed. They came with three big points, which we, of course, expected them being the favorites for this game. Next up is their 1-0 win against the runs in the semifinal of the French Cup, which, of course, puts them into the final. They're on course for uh, trouble this season, per se. Very, very, I think, overall, course of the 90 minutes, difficult game. For PSG, I think they played well overall. Uh, you can see you know, the player ratings for the team as well. Who's played well, who didn't. You have Dembele there with an 8.1 without getting a goal or an assist. Uh, it was a dominant performance from them. I don't think Rennes had a really uh, any chance. I think the reason why the scoreline suggested it was a close game was because PSG didn't really finish their chances in this game, so to speak. But overall for them, I would say over the course of a 90 minutes, comfortable win. Maybe the last few minutes there was a bit of a ropiness to it because all, you know, Rennes needed was one goal to push it to extra time and potential penalties. But overall, they did get, of course, the job done. Now, their final match in all competitions over the past weekend at home as well. A 1-1 draw with Clermont. If you look at the starting lineup for this game, of course, Full rotation. They have fully rotated their team. All 11 players from the goalkeeper to the striker. Full rotation from them. Again, that pretty much means that their players had about a week off. You could say, of course, some of them came off the bench, played, uh, I think, around 20 minutes or so. I think Mbappe uh, did end up playing 15 minutes in this game because they were 1-0 down. They weren't playing too well. They, again, this is a rotated side, so you can't really judge it too, too much. When the big boys came in, they got a goal, but it wasn't enough for them to get the uh, win, so to speak. But again, in league, uh, they've already won the league. It's... Not really a damper of a performance, so to speak. The on the screen right now is a lineup that I believe that Luis Enrique will select for this match with the help of PSG Int. He was helping me pick this team through Twitter DM, so shout out to him. So I think he will go with Donnarumma in goal, a back four of Marquisio, Baraldo, Lucas Hernandez, and Nuno Menge at fullback. Midfield diamond of Fab uh, Fabian Ruiz, Vitinha, Wairzai Emery, Kang Lee Ing as well, and a front two of Ousmane Dembele and Kylian. Mbappe you know this team on paper isn't frightening you take out Mbappe dare I say it's a kind of a mid team but with that uh, and uh, with uh, the front two being decisive we all know of course Kangling in from his time in La Liga with Mallorca and Valencia a very very good player Vitini has been unbelievable this season uh, if I've been Ruiz we've been linked with a lot with as well Zaire Emery is kind of their Gabby in the sense you know one of their young talents coming through and playing well in the midfield the defense overall strong I think Marquezio at right back of course filling in for Hakimi who is suspended for this game so again that can maybe be somewhat of a different uh, outlet for Barcelona to kind of exploit but again I think overall strong side experience young talent but again a very dangerous side if Barcelona let it be so overall final thoughts on Paris Saint-Germain of course they're an elite side they're one of the best teams in the world I think they're undefeated this year or this season maybe since like November or something they haven't lost a game very well managed by their manager Luis Enrique Luis Enrique, of course, a Barcelona legend himself, a manager that Barcelona want to replace Xavi as well. So he's going to have a very, very tough affair, you know, facing one of the, the clubs of his life. It's going to be difficult, I think, from her, from his perspective. But again, an absolute elite, elite manager. In terms of players to look out for, for PSG, I would honestly just say the front two. Kylian Mbappe and Dembele. Of course, Dembele just left Barcelona last summer. We know what Dembele can do. I think Mbappe, of course, one of the best players, if not the best player, in the world. Donnarumma has been on sensational form this season as well. Uh, I, think, I think personally for me, I do rate Kenley Ng, so I would watch out for him. Uh, Zaire Emery, if he's on his day, along with Vitinha, very, very strong players. Apart from that, I think the team is fairly good. Nuno Menge is coming off the back of an injury, so I don't know how he'll be playing, you know, at the elite level, but he's a very, very good fullback on his day. And again, it's a team that can cause danger, but also a team that you can counteract. If you just don't give this team space, we can easily, easily nullify them. I think it really comes down to who exploits the other team the best. Will t Will Chavi have a tactical approach? Will Luis Enrique have some sort of a tactical chain? I think they th if they think about the game too, too, too much, it might overshadow the fact that just play a simple game. Control the midfield. Uh, don't give especially the ability for Vitinha and Fabian Ruiz and why is Emery to find Kylian Mbappe with those long balls over the top. Don't give Mbappe the space 1v1s, maybe even 2v1s alongside our defenders as well. That's where they kind of, you know, exploit. Same with Dembele as well. We know his dribbling skills. We know his ability uh, on the ball getting into the final third is dangerous. And Barcelona only had to do, counteract that, play our game. And of course, pushing forward, be clinical in your chances. If against, you know, the top sides this season in the Champions League, PSG do leak a few chances and it's up to Barcelona to exploit it. Now with this being a cup game, of course, yellow card suspensions is something that's very, very important and something very key and that could even honestly decide a tie overall. And there are seven, seven Barcelona players who are one yellow card away 
from suspension. And if these seven players get a yellow card in this game, they will not play the second leg next week at the Monjuic. The seven players are Lamen Yamal, Frankie de Jong, Ronald Arujo, Andreas Christensen, João Felix, Fernand Torres, and Sergi Roberto. Some big, big players in there for Barcelona. For me personally, I'm telling Arujo, do not get a yellow card. If you're getting a red card, you know the bat base through, you pull him down, save a goal, whatever. Do not get a yellow card. I think with Frankie, Christensen, Lamen Yamal, if one of them get it, it's going to suck, but it is what it is. I think the main one here is Arujo. Uh, if 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 Lamen Yamal, Frankie, Arujo, Christensen all get yellow cards, we might be screwed in the second leg. We might have to kill this game in the first leg. I mean, this is so, so key for Barcelona. I don't think PSG have... Uh, any players who are big that are th that are in threat in jeopardy for that second leg. It is mainly on Barcelona. Even Sergio Roberto, you know, if he gets the yellow card off the bench, and you know, Frankie Young gets the yellow card in the game, we have basically no midfield uh, in the next game. Same with Christensen. I mean, it is huge here. I don't know what Xavi's gonna do in this mindset. I would, I think Lamen Yamal should not be getting a yellow card this game by any means necessary. Even a tactical foul, unless he's through on goal, I would say just let him go at that point. I'm mainly worried about Aruha. I think he's the most likely one to get yellow card here, maybe alongside Christensen as well. But we'll wait to see how things turn out. But again, keep your eyes on that yellow card suspension. A lot of huge and you know important Barcelona players in jeopardy of missing the second leg. Let's now take a look at the squad list. The squad list for this match has been released and confirmed, and it is as follows: Ter Stegen, Cancelo, Arujo, Inigo, Fran, Pedri, Lewandowski, Rafinha, Peña, Felix, Christensen, Alonso, Romeu, Roque, Roberto, De Jong, Kunde, Gundogan, Astralaga, Lamin Yamal, Casado, Fermin, Kubarsi, Marguayu, and Hector Ford. Pretty much everyone is traveling except for Alejandro Bolle. Gavi is also traveling with the squad, of course. He's not going to play the game. He's going there for morale, confidence, and, you know, team spirit uh, vibe. No ball, though. He's the only first team player who is not going to this game whatsoever. He will be staying in Barcelona. But apart from that, everyone else is traveling. Of course, Pedri and Frankie de Jong are traveling without the medical green line. And, of course, Christensen is back. He was never declared injured by the club. So we're assuming that he's fully fit. But again, de Jong and Pedri still waiting the final green light. Time now to get into the press conference reaction of Jules Koundé, as we all know in the Champions League, a player always accompanies the manager and Jules Koundé was selected. Will he be starting? Is it because he speaks French? No idea, but he was selected, but let's get to see what our center back slash right back had to say going into this match. He came out saying the PSG match, I'm very excited, I'm looking forward to it. These are my, this is my first uh, quarterfinal game, the team is in good, very good shape, and we are ready for the test. On Mbappe, I don't know if I have to mark him, he's a differential player, he makes a difference, and we'll try to stop him, but on a collective level, PSG is more than just one player, PSG being the favorites, it does not matter to us, it's just one more thing for the media, I have confidence in our team, it'll be a difficult match to say we are favorites, I don't think so. On the emergence of Kubarsi, he's a very young, he's very, uh, he competes very well. He's an example for all the young players who are in La Masia who want to play in the first team. He gives us a plus, the, uh, the play without pressure, and he's also very relaxed. On Dembele, he's a player who's able to dribble very well. Like Mbappe, he's a player who can also make the difference. The match against PSG is just another game for us. I'm happy to be able to take part in it. Improvement in the team, we are regaining the defensive level of last season. We are effective, we're effective in all lines. We're on a good dynamic, and we hope to keep it up. Have I spoken to Xavi about Mbappe? I know him very well, of course, from the videos and national team duty as well. We're more focused. We're making more effort. We're all defending starting at the top. Rivals generate less and give us confidence. When you don't concede, you have uh, more chances to win the game. It's the effort from everyone of a collective. We communicate and we talk and the results come. I'm um, playing at center back or right back. The biggest quote here from Kunde, the press conference. I have no preference. Lately, the coach has been putting me at right back. I play wherever the coach tells me to. So in this comes up in the summer, oh, Conde wants to leave because he's not playing uh, center back. Remember this quote. Again, multiple times he's come out saying, I'll play wherever the coach uh, puts me, and he's saying this yet again. Uh, if it's my job to defend Mbappe, I'll do it. I'll do what the coach tells me to do, and I will try my best. Getting through to the semifinal is what's at stake. We don't see beyond that. It's very exciting about this match because we haven't been here in a long time. We're going to compete well tomorrow and finally Kunde was asked on the match be, uh, being between the two defensive teams and yes we'll have to uh, defend very well starting with the two forwards we'll have to make them focus because they can also play well in transition and they're also very quick as well and that concluded Jules Kunde's press conference reaction and have the match against Paris Saint-Germain tomorrow. 
Time now to get into Chavi's press conference reaction. Of course, following Kunde, Chavi then came into the press room to give his remarks on the game. He gave us updates on player injuries and, of course, momentum and how the game feels at the moment. So let's get to see what our manager had to say coming into this match. He starts off by saying that a good moment, the word after four years without reaching the quarterfinal is excitement. It said it in a fortnight ago, we can dream, we are very motivated, we are the, uh, one of the best moments uh, of the season for us personally, but we have a team ready to win the Champions League and one of the best coaches in the world. He's then asked what you think about Luis Enrique saying that he represents uh, Barcelona's style better than you. Of course, uh, Luis Enrique did say this in his pre national conference, but it was taken out of context just a little bit. And Chavi said, I've seen him well. He is Luis Enrique. I have a great relationship with him. He has a team built to win the Champions League. We are facing a very difficult opponent and we are both looking for a similar style. We can uh, boost the Barcelona DNA, Luis Enrique, Pep, Arteta. Tomorrow we'll be looking for the same thing here and it's up to the players to find the DNA that identifies us. What will we do to stop Mbappe? Uh, yeah, well, Mbappe, Dembele, Colomouani, Vitinha, and the whole squad itself. We had to be very vigilant and we had to be uh, brilliant in this aspect. Then asked about Frankie De Jong and Pedro being available for this game, saying that I can confirm that all those who have traveled will be available for tomorrow's game, barring any surprises. Look, there is no way, I still think there is no way Pedri is going to be even on the bench for this game. I think De Jong will be worst case scenario on the bench, could start, I doubt Pedri. I think Chavi just playing mind games here a little bit, but we'll see. He then asked about what position will Gunnar will play tomorrow. He said that won't give any uh, clues, but he'll be very important for us. They will give us uh, individual duels. Those are his teams are perhaps the most energetic in the world. The demand is maximum. We'll have to come out with the pressure very well. And I think we've worked well on this aspect. He was then asked about his season with Luis Enrique as the coach, and that it was a difficult year at the beginning, and then everything was straightened out in an incredible way. Also knowing that it was my last year, I hope it would end well, and it ended up like a failure a trouble and winning the Champions League as the captain. I had an incredible relationship with Luis Enrique when he was the Barcelona coach. I think I helped him a lot as a captain in difficult in difficult times and I remember it with pride as well. Then as about Dembele, now this quote is very, very, very interesting. Chavi came out saying that Dembele and I sent each other messages after the draw and said that we would like to see each other in Paris. I have a respect for him. He decided to come here. It was a challenge for him and that's why I think PSG are the favorites for this tie. They took a great player away from us in the summer. Any surprises tomorrow? He said that I don't know. It's football. It's unpredictable. But we will we will try to control the variations. Luka Rike has a wide range. There's a lot of possibilities that he can work with because I know him very well. It will be a one-on-one -on -one game. The Barcelona philosophy. Arteta, Pep, and myself have been created uh, with this uh, DNA. We are talking about a new batch of coaches who are midfielders, and I think that Barcelona's philosophy is key, and it is an advantage. My first Champions League quarterfinal as a coach. It's a challenge. It's a responsibility, and I've seen the Barcelona fans are very excited. Perhaps we are in the best moment of our season and the players are super motivated as well. Something personal about this Champions League, I will face it with motivation as a great challenge, but not as someone personal. I took it for the club, for the players. I want Barcelona to be in the semifinal, not Xavi. This is a, not about uh, thinking about collectively, but it's not about ego as well. There are four managers in this stage in the Champions League that represent Barcelona DNA, Pep, Arteta, Luis Enrique, and myself. This says a lot about us. Of course, he means as a club. To say that we are not the favorites is not a strategy. I really don't think so. I think PSG are the favorites. They have taken the belly away from us. They have spent a lot of money more than us. They are a team that is made to win the Champions League. I think a little bit of mind games there. I think, again, this tie is 50-50. So whether Chavi came out saying, saying we're the favorites or they're the favorites, I don't think it's really going to make that much of a difference. Came out saying afterwards saying that putting a player to defend uh, Dembappe individually so men marking Mbappe himself and Chavi said I don't like it it's another thing to cover to have numerical superiority but I don't like you know man marking one player on one player per se and again there have been reports that Chavi wants to man mark in this game so you know maybe he could be lying you never know uh, on the midfield tomorrow Chavi said I don't think it will very much tomorrow we visualize a lot of individual duels maybe in this match we value more how the players and, and physically and tomorrow is a match that is at 100% we'll be able to think and we will have to of course push for the full 90 minutes uh, this period is key for the product, Travis said, yes, of course, this is about the result. We're going to uh, get a lot of praise for the result. It's an important part coming. We have two or three race sets of weeks ahead of us. So, yes. Uh, Luis Enrique, I've already said that he, we are both looking for the same thing. Maybe I'm better than him in some things and he's better than me in other things. We are both looking for the exact same thing. There is no more controversy apart from that. Now, I'll say it again. PSG are the favorites. They have Guzman Dembele. The veterans are very motivated. We have an exploratory dressing room. We have They have how they train, how they want to win, and uh, most of them already know how to win the Champions League. They already know the, the way to do it, and I hope the fans will enjoy 
tomorrow's match. We bloody better <laughs> enjoy the match tomorrow. But that included Chavi's press conference reaction and the match against Paris Saint Germain tomorrow. Let's now get into the lineup prediction. We're gonna start with the manager, of course, Chavi Hernandez. I'm gonna try my best to predict his lineup. I think it will be fairly simple to predict, but there are, of course, maybe two or three absolutely massive, massive calls. But I think that Chavi will go with this lineup on the screen right now. He'll go with Mark Under Stegen in goal, a back four of Kunde, Arujo, Kubarsi, and Joel Cancelo. Midfield three of Christensen, Gundawan, and Frankie De Jong in a front three of Levan Yamal, Lewandowski and Rafinha. First up, that back five is concrete beyond belief. Ter Stegen, Kunde, Arujo, Kubarsi, Joel Cancelo, 100%. Front three, Lemenya, Mal, Lewandowski, Rafinha, I would say 99%. I would say Rafinha on the left could be the big question mark. You might chuck in for Min Lopez in there. Maybe even Roberto to have a midfield forward overload the midfield. But I think Lemenya, Mal, Lewandowski, 100%. Rafinha, 99%. I would say good to one, 100%. Gonna start this game as well. The question mark is the two players returning from injury. Now, I think Christensen is pretty much sorted for this game. I think 95% he will start. Apparently, he could have played against Las Palmas, but they didn't want to risk him whatsoever. The question mark is Frankie De Jong. Of course, he's coming off the back of being out for about a month and a half, I want to say. This is the... I know we talk about don't risking players, don't risk players. This is a point in the season where you risk players. That's how I see it personally. I think that's how, how Chavi will see it um, as well. We might get some pain injections, some pain kills in there. I have no idea. But in terms of the actual 11, I think that Chavi will go with this lineup on the screen right now. But of course, in the comments down below, let me know what you think Chavi will go with. Now I'm going to show you guys my lineup, what I would do if I was the Barcelona coach. Let's not waste any time here. I picked the same lineup as Chavi. I would risk Frankie De Jong in this game. I would risk Christensen in this game. Wouldn't risk Pedri. I don't think it's worth it. I don't think he's even close enough to being fit. Rafinha on the left for me was the big call. I was thinking about being putting Fermin Lopez out wide. Maybe even Sergio Roberto as well. Just have an overload in the midfield. I think again that back five, Gundogan, Lemanya Mal, Lewandowski pretty much set in stone just about that three down that left Christensen, De Jong, and Rafinha I've gone with the same as Xavi I think anything other than this lineup from Xavi and even myself as well genuinely I would be shocked all this Victor Roque talk this Joel Felix talk I really think it's all just smokes and mirrors to kind of play with the the mind of our opponents personally I would say so I think overall this is our best team currently as things stand fitness wise and form wise and this would be the outside for this match but of course in the comments down below let me know if you agree or disagree with mine and Chavi's lineup time now for my score prediction what do I believe the result will be in this match I'm sitting in my RS right up on the fence and I've gone with a 1-1 draw in this game I will say this though I think PSG can win this game I also think that Barcelona can win this game and I think it all comes down to who scores first I think there will be goals in this game I'll be shocked if it's a nil nil I think there will be goals who scores first and when will be for me be the deciding factor if we score first in the you know 10 50 minutes into the game I'll be confident we can at least walk away with a draw if PSG score in the first 10 15 minutes Lord have mercy on my soul. It's going to be Eid tomorrow, so hopefully I get some Eid miracles, some Eid luck, and we just don't lose this game. I think we can just walk away here without defeat. We're well in contention of progressing into the semifinals. I think we'll definitely have a strong chance of winning at the Montjuic. A loss just by one goal for me wouldn't be the end of the world. It's going to be a disappointing result. I think we lose by more than two goals. I think this will be... I think that's when the tie is over. Two more goals, a uh, loss. It's a wrap for us. To be in this tie, to survive, just win. Just win. I'm saying like just win like, like it's easy. Win or draw. Just don't lose this game. I'll be absolutely happy, especially going to next week at the Montjuic. But I think this match will end in a draw either nil-nil or 1-1. Don't think it'll be a 2-2 or a 3-3, anything like that. But of course, in the comments down below, let me know what you think the scoreline will be. So that was a match preview for PSG versus Barcelona in the quarterfinal first leg in the Champions League. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course leave your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discuss. Of course, the main thing I want to firstly is your thoughts on the lineups. You agree with my lap and Travis lineup? What do you think that I would go with and what would you go with? as a manager and secondly of course your score prediction as well leave your thoughts down below and of course make sure you subscribe down below as well if you haven't already and i will see you guys tomorrow for the live watch along set the reminder on the screen and come and join me watch the game with me fall after the match buy my match reviews i'll see you guys tomorrow Ah, oh, huge, huge game. It's going to be a huge day for me as well. You know, I'm going to be celebrating, you know, after fasting and all this stuff. And I hope that Barcelona will now put me in a damper mood. But I'll see you guys then for that. Take care and force a Barca. Barcelona, Barcelona.